So my name is Ida Schultz, and I'm a researcher at Örebro University. And uh, I'm a group leader there, where I lead the project of healthy aging. And, um, whoops, sorry, I'm a little bit lost my mind here, sorry. I should keep hold this, hold on to this, otherwise you will not hear me at all. Yeah, anyway, I'm leading the project of health, healthy aging. And uh, I'm working within two research centers, uh, Nutrition Gut Brain Interactions Research Center and uh, the Center for Older Persons Health and Living Conditions. And we have um, a different, different goals. My background is in gut health, so we also investigate in the role of the gut for uh, health aging. And also looking into new models of health, health aging where we also came up on this um, sport and the senior orienting athletes. Do you guys hear me? This is okay, a little bit annoying, but you'll stop me if, if you don't hear me. All right, so uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit why we st started to investigate senior orienting athletes as a model of healthy aging. And um, first, I just want to mention why it is important to find new models of healthy aging. Because today we age well. We are getting us older and older. And so the population of older adults is increasing worldwide. And it's important to live your life as well as you can for as long as you can. Uh, and the, the in within the field of healthy aging, you have been we have been looking a lot at people who age long. They're reaching a high age. So often centenarians are used as a model of healthy or uh, not uh, of aging, nor uh, merely, because they are not taking into consideration maybe the illnesses and the disabilities that you get when you get older. But instead, I believe, and many with me, and we are sort of changing the field a little bit, that we need to find um, new models. We need to investigate people that are living well, that are uh, right now <laughs> happy and and having the uh, ability to live long. And this is when we came up on orienteering and looking into the sport. Because what is so fantastic with the sport is, if you look upon it from a healthy aging perspective, why would it be important? Of course, now I'm already talking to people who are, are with me on this, but uh, I should just uh, go through it quickly. It is, of course, an uh, uh, endurance running sport. Uh, it is a cross country navigation, which also requires cognitive skills and physical uh, skills are essential to be able to to perform this sport. And we also found out, as uh, Brian was just saying, that there is also a large number of older adults practicing this sport, which I think is a very genuine thing, as you also said. Uh, and I mean, I met people that are 95 years old that's still doing orienteering. I think that's extraordinary. Such a great sport. And also what also interested me was then I started to read up on this and successful aging and healthy aging. We we looked into what is successful aging and what are the criteria for this. And there are three. We could say that there should be a social atmosphere. Of course, may many of you might know this already. But there also should also be a cognitive challenge. So you should do exercise both your brain and your, your uh, body, of course, with physical activity. And so these are the criteria for successful aging. But you can also put in orienteering here, right? Because you have all these three components also in orienteering. And uh, as I think, also I, I was just going to say too, what this that you said about it being a family sport. I think that was also something I will talk about a little bit more about that. But something that the older adults that we interviewed when we have a group discussion with them, they emphasized that it was a family sport, and something that made them feel great was that they uh, met um, both children and they met. Uh, people in their own age, but also in between, right? All, all over the generations, which was very important to them. And uh, so we set out to investigate senior orienteering athletes as a potential new model for health aging. This is so uh, big, I almost can see what I've been written, <laughs> writing. <laughs> but so the aim of our study was really to explore a Swedish population of senior orienteering athletes as a model of health aging. I'm just going to tell you a little bit of this study. It was published last year in a biomedical um, magazine called Biomed Biomedical... Uh, I forgot now. Biomedical centers, I think, and then it is geriatrics. Uh, Biomedi Biomedicine Central, <laughs> geriatrics newspaper, uh, scientific journal. I'm sorry. I'm just back from my maternity leave, which you might uh, hear now. 
I hoped I was hoping that I wouldn't show, but apparently I'm losing my mind sometimes. Anyway, it was uh, just published. And uh, so I just want to acknowledge also the work of my PhD student, who is Lina Östlund Lagerström, who has performed the majority of the work that I'm presenting here today. So anyway, we set out on this. So it was a three, we did it in three steps. The first step was that we recruited senior orienting athletes uh, that was going to participate in Oringen in Bo Boden in 2012. And we sent out some questionnaires uh, prior to this event. And uh, here we asked them questions about all from gut health to general well-being, well psychological stress, and so on. So it's quite a, a, a lot of data that they were giving to us. And the next step was that we recruited people closer in the Örebro region to have uh, group discussions to more look into what orienting meant for them and what health meant for them. And then we sent out the follow-up questions because in these group discussions there came up a lot of different areas and we wanted to send it back to this uh, orienting at least that we sent out the questionnaires to check uh, again our material. Was it true what we found and uh, just to, to, uh, to see how, how to look upon it, if it was the same? So what the variables that we as measure, I'm just going to tell you quickly, was um, level of physical activity over the whole year. We also looked into uh, health status and general well-being, uh, gastrointestinal health, and psychological distress. These were the parameters that we asked them to uh, fill out questionnaires about. Uh, so what did we find then? Of course, this might not be such such a shock to anyone. Of course, the, the orienteers and the senior orienteers uh, taking part in our study exercised uh, a lot more, significantly more than general older adults not uh, engaging in orienteering. We also found that they rate themselves very high with their health. They are feeling very well. And uh, we also found that orienteers report less gut problems. And this, I think, is interesting coming from a a background within gastrointestinal health and done a lot of studies before on uh, just uh, gut problems. I think this is important because as you age, the gut changes. And we know today that many older adults, for example, in senior living homes and so on, have a, a lot of problems with their gut. And so I think this is amazing that uh, so such a low number of people experience that and, and they were orienteers compared to, you see that 98. 9.8% suffered from moderate problems compared to 42.4% of the general older adults, which is uh, remarkable, I think. And uh, we also found that, that a lower number of older adults uh, or, or orienteers suffered from psychological distress. So these were the questionnaire data. We then took this further to go into a group discussion. So we invited, uh, I think, we, uh, 14 uh, senior orienteering at least participated in these group discussions. We had divided them into men and women also to just see if there was any gender differences. And we asked the topics then, what uh, do you perceive as health and uh, how important is physical activity for you, for your well-being? And what came up on this was then, uh, again, it's sort of the group discussions also emphasized what we found out from the questionnaires, but I think this is this was wonderful, I have to say that, meeting these senior orienteering athletes, such wonderful people, I have to say that, so open and so fantastic, and they were telling us so many great things about, about orienteering, and I, I need to start doing this sport now, if I want to age this well too. So we had questions then about physical activity, and I, first of all, I should say that this was amazing. In this male group that we had, all these senior orienteering athletes, there were one who told us that he felt so strong, he could do like two 90 kilometer, like Vasa Loppet, twice, a twice in one week. And he still suffered from high cholesterol, but he felt so strong and physical activity really meant everything to him. So it's great. But one other thing that we also uh, picked up in these group discussions was also that it's, that the orienting is a sport. I should read this uh, citation for you. When you get tired, you can stand still and read the map. I think that is the best. As soon as you get tired, you can stop and with clean conscience, read the map. If you run on the court, you get beheaded or yelled at. <laughs> and I think this is great because you can do it in your own level. And I think that is great for these uh, seniors. You, you take it in your own pace. And I think uh, for these uh, 
uh, for these um, people that meant a lot too. And then we had the um, health status, <coughs> also how they experience health, health, and this is also a citation is from a female participant, uh, being able to walk outside and move, do whatever you want to, wake up and feel, oh, what a nice day, it's a new day, and you want to do things, and you have a pos positive view of life, that is health to me. And I think this is also something that we picked up during these group discussions, that the senior orienteering, at least, they were very positive to life. Had a very good uh, yeah, mot motivation to both stay physically active, but also take care of your health. And the gut health, they also commented on that, that, that that's also being a, an important part for keeping healthy. And uh, what he said here was, you can see it on anyone that the gut matters because you don't have any power, you can manage a anything, you can't manage anything if you have a bad gut. And uh, so they just acknowledged it too, that, that, uh, that gut health is something that matters. And then, Oh, I should, the mental health too, also something that came out was of course that they have a strong, um, strong mind. And uh, <laughs> I think this is great. Once, one, uh, one can endure when others get fed up. What are you whining about? It is just the pushing forward and then you just keep on pushing. So this is again a, a male participant who also feels that he has, has he has, um, uh, how should I say, compared to others, he feels uh, that he has a good mindset, right? And uh, then we asked, uh, from this group focus groups discussion, or these discussions, we just sent out a questionnaire, or like one question, what is the most important reasons for you to stay physically active? And we gave the following choices based on these discussions of what came up there. Uh, it is one, improving my physical health, improving my mental health, being part of a social context. Uh uh. Oh, it says one, one, one. Oh, never mind. Perform better at competitions. And here it's also again uh, fascinating because this was circled most of the times, and this was also up there, uh, the, the second that came up. And uh, I have to say that the least that was uh, circled, or the least of the terms, it was the last one to perform better competitions. So again, we have the three components of su su successful aging, right? Which I told about in the beginning, that is the physical activity and the mental health and the social context. They themselves tells us about this, which again, sort of tells us that we are on the right track here, that senior orientation at least could be seen as a new model of healthy aging. Anyway, I can tell you then that what we set out with the ne next phase of this was to look into biomedical markers of the senior orienting athletes. And uh, I can go for That's okay. No worries. Oh, here we are. Good. So, uh, because we then wanted to see, does this high health and uh, the way that degrade themselves, that is also can it also be mirrored or seen in the body? Do they experience lower inflammation? and other biomedical markers. So uh, this is just a, a study that is ongoing. So we just tell you a little bit of the results that we ha have so far, but it's just so you know it's, it's going on. And um, so first, what we did was that we recruited 28 senior orienteering athletes again. And we also had as a sort of, since we wasn't sure what we were going to find here, we also took a um, positive control group, so to say, or uh, uh, older adults suffering from gut problems, because we wanted a group where we might have might see something when we look at these inflammatory markers to see if are we on to something here or not, as a first step. And these were all from the region of Örebro. And then we asked them to give us fecal sample. And in the fecal samples, we looked for something called calprotectin which is a marker of local inflammation in the gut. So calprotectin is um, excreted in the feces when you have get an inflammation in the, in the intestine and you have a lot of in, uh, certain cells to come to uh, take care of the inflammation. Then this protein is secreted. And then we also asked them to give us blood and in blood we looked at C-reactive protein, which is a protein that uh, increases in the body when you have an infection or uh, inflammation.
but it, that this is more systemically, so you cannot really see where the inflammation is. So this is just to say, uh, is, it, is it an inflammation or not, or inf an infection? And we also looked at metabolic stress levels. Uh, this was more also to see, uh, which also is something that uh, can be generated when you have a inflammation also. I know this is also a marker that can go up when you when you do uh, when you exercise as well, but uh, we use it in this sense. Uh, so what we found here was that actually that senior orienting at, at least it did uh, displayed less systemic inflammation compared to these older adults suffering from gut problems, and uh, we also found that uh, that um, half of the population of older adults suffer from gut complaints displayed elevated levels of calprotectin compared to 32% of orienteers. And of course, this might not be such a big difference, but it was something that at least we think is interesting to go further with. And uh, I think this is more had to do that we might have not also included the right, uh, uh, it's the not the right size yet to say something about it, but at least something it's a result of going further with. So I'm just going to mention a few then conclusions from what we can draw so far of these studies that we have performed. And um, one is, of course, that we think the senior orienting at least is a model, uh, it's a potential new model of healthy aging. Uh, it plays the three hallmarks of, of successful aging. And, uh, but we need to thoroughly investigate more than uh, from maybe from a more biomedical approach. What does this mean? And to investigate it a little bit more would be great for us, I think. And uh, a few tips then for on how to age healthy from this study, right? That would be to challenge yourself in chaining the body and the mind and uh, participate in social activities or just enroll your whole family in an orienteering club, right? Because I should just emphasize something here and that is that of course these senior orienteering athletes that we have investigated, they have of course performed orienteering like 45 years. I think that's the median <laughs> that this ends up with. So of course I think it's better to start early. I'm, I'm going to take my kids next year to the orienteering club, right? So this is it. So thank you so much for having me here and uh, for listening to me. And I would just uh, uh, last just uh, like to acknowledge my research institute and particularly uh, Lina Östlund Lagerström, my PhD student. She just defended her thesis a couple of weeks ago and here she is. <laughs> so thank you so much for, for listening and for having me here. Yes.